Hi everybody and welcome to another Crafternoon. My name is Tara and I work for the Ottawa Public Library. I'm excited to be here again this week to share another exciting art project with you. We are going to be going to the land down under, the land of snakes, kangaroos, koalas, lizards, spiders, turtles, frogs, kookaburras, emus, and more. Are you ready? Activate your creative mind, warm up your fingers, and if you think you might need some help, don't be shy to ask a grown-up. Today, we are going to be creating an Australian Aboriginal style dot painting. The Aboriginal people of Australia created this interesting style of painting using only dots, no lines. So, are you ready? Let's get started. Here's a list of items you're going to need to create your very own Australian Aboriginal style dot painting. To complete your very own Australian Aboriginal style dot painting, you're going to need a sheet of white printer paper, a pencil, an eraser, a pencil sharpener, a set of watercolor paints. Now if you don't happen to have any watercolor paints at home, it's no problem. You can always use an assortment of colored markers and they will work fine as well. If you do decide to choose the watercolor paints for this project, you're also going to need a little container with some water in it and something to paint with, so either a little paintbrush or, if you don't have a paintbrush, Q-tips work really well for this project. You may also want to have a paper towel if you're using the paints. For the end of your project, if you'd like to frame it, you may also want to have a glue stick on hand along with a sheet of colored construction paper. Alright, now that we've rounded up all of the materials we're going to need to create our Australian dot painting, we're going to begin with step one. So we need our sheet of white printer paper and a pencil. And you might want to have your eraser and your pencil sharpener nearby, just in case you need them. So the first thing we need to do is to choose what Australian animal we are going to draw. Um, so there are two animals that I think of when I think of Australia, and those are the koala bear and the kangaroo. But there are so many other animals in Australia, so it's really up to you which one you want to choose. Uh, some other ideas are an emu, which is a large bird that sort of looks like an ostrich. There are also lots of spiders and snakes. Uh, they also have frogs and sea turtles and all sorts of other animals. So if you want to do a search on the internet, you might be able to find some interesting ideas. And we're just going to be drawing very lightly in pencil the outline of the animal. So I'm going to be drawing a kangaroo. If you want to draw a kangaroo as well, you can follow these instructions, or if you want to try out your own animal, that's fine too. So we're just going to be doing the outline. So I'm going to begin over here with the tail of the kangaroo, and my kangaroo is going to be in a running stance, so he's going to be kind of in motion, so he's not going to be sitting down. He's going to look like he's actually running. So I'm going to start over here with the tail, and the tail's going to be curved up a little bit. And then it's going to come down. And I'm coming back up now to draw the kangaroo's back. And I'm going to come up here for his neck. And I'm going to draw an ear. And back down towards his neck. I'm going to be drawing his front paws now. And 
to coming down again, I'm going to start to draw the leg, which is going to be hopping along the ground. So... He's got a big hind foot and hind leg. And now I'm going to come up and complete the tail. Okay, so here is the outline of my kangaroo. Now you'll notice that the pencil line is not very dark. Um, but that's okay because we're going to be using the dots to emphasize this contour. So let's move on to our next step. Okay, as you can see, I now have brought out my watercolor paints. I have some Q-tips for painting, but if you don't have any Q-tips or if you prefer to use a paintbrush, that's no problem. I have my little container of water, my napkin, and I mentioned earlier that if you don't have any watercolor paints, you can easily just do all the steps of this project with colored markers. That's no problem. So I'm going to start now with a Q-tip. I'm going to dip it in my water, and I'm going to choose a color that I'm going to put all the way around the contour of this nice kangaroo. So I think I'm going to choose a nice bright color. Uh, let's see, how about some red? I'm going to do some red here. So I've wet the end of my q-tip. If you're using a paintbrush, of course, you can dip that in the water instead. And I'm going to make sure that I've got lots of this red pigment on the end of my q-tip. And now I'm going to start using little dots going around the outer outline of my kangaroo. So I'm leaving space between the dots. I'm not actually drawing a line because this is a dot painting. So this is their style of painting that they like to do. And they use dots all throughout the painting. So the first step here is to outline the shape of our animal we've chosen. And I've chosen a kangaroo. So I'm going to go all the way around this kangaroo with my red dots. the contour of my kangaroo with these red dots I'm going to fill him in with more dots but I'm going to be switching colors so you're going to want a clean q-tip or you'll have to wash off your paintbrush and start with a nice clean brush and for this interior section I think I'm going to stick to oranges and yellows so let me see here oh this one looks nice that's a nice orange, so I'm just going to make sure I get lots of paint on this Q-tip so that it's a nice bright orange when I start to use it. Okay, that should be good. And I'm going to do some more dots now. So I can fit some orange in here. So you just kind of fill in the space, leaving some space between your dots. And now I'm going to begin going around where the red was. So you'll see down here that there was only room for one color. But now that I'm going around here, I'm going to end up with a little bit of extra space in the body and I'll use a different color for that inside space. But for right now, I'm going to try and follow the red dots with my orange Q-tip now. Just putting dots inside the areas 
where the red dots are. that if you don't happen to have any watercolor paints we can use markers so I'm just going to show you how that would be done in this next step now if you're using the watercolors you would just continue with your q-tip and your water and your next color so my next color that I'm going to choose is going to be yellow but for those of you who are using markers I'm just going to show you how you would use the markers for this project so I'm going to use yellow. The other thing I want to do is I think I'd like to add just one little dot to make the eye of the kangaroo. So for my eye, I'd like it to be fairly visible and noticeable. So I'm going to choose a color that's different than these reds and oranges and yellows. I'm going to choose something a little bit darker, like maybe um, I think I'm going to choose a blue. So I'm just going to create one dot for the eye. So you'll notice that the tip of this marker is fairly fine. So we're going to make the dot a little bit larger than just, see if I just put my marker down like that, it makes a very small dot. So I'm just going to make that dot a little bit larger. There we go. That's a nice eye. Now I'm going to continue my dots with my yellow marker. And like I just did with the eye, I'm going to create dots that are just a little bit larger than if I had just tapped my point of my marker down on the paper. So I'm going to make them larger. I'm going to follow the orange. So this section where the kangaroo head is, I'm going to do pretty well all in yellow. Same here with the area of the neck. There's really only room for one color. But I think later on, once we get all the way around this contour, it looks like there's still going to be some space in the center for another color. So just watch as I do this. And again, if you're using a, a Q-tip, you would just continue how we did with the red and the orange. But if you're using markers, you want to try to make your dots larger than the tip of the marker. Okay, that's looking pretty nice. Now I'm going to switch to another color and I think I'm actually going to go back to the red. So if, again, if you're using paint, just go back to your paint with your Q-tip or your paintbrush. And if you're using markers, then just select your next color and continue making your dots. Now I'm going to switch back to orange. and all we need to finish is the background. All right, now that the inside of our kangaroo is completed, we're going to begin with the background. So I'd like you to just have a quick look around and see if you can find something circular, like the lid of a yogurt container or a small bowl. And you're going to take your pencil and simply place your round object down where there's some room. So in this corner, I've got a little bit of room. I've got some room in this corner and I've got quite a bit of room up here. So I'm just gonna place my bowl down here. And I'm gonna trace around it. It doesn't have to be the entire circle, just a little bit of the circle. And I've got some more room over here. So I'll trace that one here. I'll make this one a little bit darker so you can see it better. And 
there's a nice spot up here where I can do a third one. Okay, great. So now we're going to start painting the background and we're gonna be using dots yet again. So if you're using your paints, make sure you have those handy again, get your water out and all of the paints you might need. There we go. So here is my Q-tip. I'm going to dip it in the water again. If you have markers only, that's fine. Just continue making dots with your markers and you can switch to a new color now. So I think instead of using these reds and oranges and yellows, I'm gonna be switching to something a little bit darker like, hmm, I like this purple over here. I think that would be nice. So I'm gonna do some purple. Get lots of that paint pigment onto your Q-tip or your brush. We want this to be a nice, vibrant painting. All right, so I'm going to start by placing little dots along the contour of these circles that we've just traced. Okay. Here's one, here's two, and the third circle up top. Okay, so we now have our three circles and we're going to continue adding dots along the inside and the outsides of the circles, but we're going to switch colors again. So this time I think I'm going to switch to a nice dark blue up here. You can choose any colors you like. You don't have to do the colors I'm doing. I'm just choosing colors that are speaking to me, but maybe you have some favorite colors and you can go right ahead and use those colors if you like. So now I'm gonna go along the inside of these circles. Continue switching colors all along. all of the dots inside the circles we're going to continue now with the outer parts of the circles now if you want to you can continue using the colors you were using or you can switch to different colors it's really up to you it's up to you to be creative so uh, again if you're painting you're using your paintbrush or your q-tips and if you're using markers you're just continuing with your dots uh, to complete the background. So I'm going to stick to the colors that I've been using and I'm just going to continue now adding dots to the outer parts of the circles until this is completely finished.
right, now that we've finished making all of the dots that make up this Australian Aboriginal style dot painting, the only thing left to do is to finish framing our art. So if you're interested in having a frame, you want to grab a sheet of colored construction paper and a glue stick. We're going to flip your artwork over. We're going to put some glue on the back. And then we're carefully going to center it on our sheet of construction paper so that the frame is nice and even all the way around your Australian dot painting. I've chosen an orange because I think that's going to look nice with the colors that I've used for my painting. And just taking some time to make sure it's nicely centered. Press it down, make sure it's got a good stick, and there you go. You can put it on the wall, or you can give it away as a gift. If you'd like to sign your artwork, you can always do that. Normally an artist signs at the bottom right, but you can sign it anywhere you like, even on the back. It's up to you. Well, I really want to thank you for joining me today to learn how to create your very own Australian Aboriginal style dot painting. I hope you had fun and that you're happy with the results. Now you can do this project over and over again with different animals. They don't even have to be animals from Australia. Why not? Be creative. I'll be back again next week for another Crafternoon Artistic Adventure. In the meantime, I'd like to invite you to check out the Ottawa Public Library's website at biblioottawalibrary.ca. Right now, we have an online summer camp going on. It's called Summerland, and there's a whole schedule filled with amazing activities and guest presenters. You might also want to join our YouTube channel, where we have all sorts of crafternoon activities, STEM activities, exercise activities, and more. I'll see you next week. Thanks for stopping by.